Hey guys, welcome back to the Simple Ground Homestead. Hey, I think it's springtime. So, being springtime, I'm uh, in the gardening mood. Of course, it starts a little bit before springtime. My wife would uh, make fun of me for that. But, uh, I'm thinking of gardening stuff. And I'm standing in front of the work that I did the other day. Um, it's going to be my garden. Here, check it out. I want to draw your attention to this beautifully tilled earth. All of the gorgeous, smooth, perfectly flat terrain, ready to mound up into hills and turn into this beautiful garden that everybody is used to seeing. <laughs> All right, you caught my joke, but it's only a little joke. I am excited about putting my garden here, and I'm going to tell you why. In my, my time learning and studying and growing up around the old folk and hearing their stories, I heard stories about um, taming a little bit of forest ground and turning it into fields or gardens or whatever, right? And I've had that little seed inside of me that wanted to give it a try. And this is my shot, right? So, I've gone through the different methods and stuff. You know, I'm thinking, imagining the teams of horses ripping the stumps out and stuff. And I'm also thinking of using my, my backhoe to rip stumps out. And keep in mind, I've done a lot of stump pulling to, to make my house possible and my septic system, all of that jazz, right? So, uh... I also understand how these little tiny stumps come out. And I also understand that the stumps that I have here aren't the common stumps that the old timers had to deal with, right? <laughs> anyway, I know that it takes a lot of effort and it's going to rip up the soil a lot, right? So um, I'm also thinking of the old practice of just leaving the stumps where they are and uh, you know, letting the process of time decay the roots and make it easier to remove them, right? And that's what we've decided to do. Uh, so I've, I've run a little bit of an experiment with some of the trees that I cut and uh, the alder trees don't seem to copus up. They don't seem to re-sprout and regrow uh, the extra limbs from the root. Uh, once you cut them down to size, they they die and stay dead. Most of what I've cut here are alder trees. And uh, I do have the few odd that will try to grow up from the root that I've left, and I'll watch those. But they're, they're few, like I already said. The majority of these are alder trees. Um, and I also found that over time, uh, you know, the short year that I've been here, those small uh, stumps rot out really quick. And I can just go up there with my foot and kick him right out. <laughs> so much, much easier. Much, much easier than breaking my backhoe apart. As you guys well know, it is kind of fragile. <laughs> you know, trying to rip those stumps out. Or risking my life trying to rip them out with a chain. You know? Anyway. So I'm just going to let it be. And I'm excited about that. So, okay. Now that I'm doing it this way... I'm not going to be able to run the rototiller, right, and aerate the ground. Uh, this is also my chance to play with some of the no-till farming gardening methods. I'm excited to try that out. So going into it, anybody who's following me, you know that I've never done the no-till stuff thinking no-till, <laughs> right? I have planted and grown things here and there, but uh, there's a lot to learn a lot on my plate and I'm excited to try I love doing this stuff I love planting things and watching them grow even if it's a little bit odd in fact I prefer doing things in a little bit odd way push the envelope sometimes it seems like I'm going back in time but you know what I mean but have no fear uh, yes there are those vegetables that need the loose soil they need or they seem to grow better with with loose soil and that's why I'm gonna kick this camper down the road a little ways and in this very well cleared little section we can have those nice vegetables that need the 
the good straight roots and um, they don't have to worry about the roots of trees to grow through. I can till it under a little bit. And so we'll have a little bit of garden here and back there. And I'm also dreaming up of a really cool fence made out of pole beans. And, oh, <laughs> I just had a little bug fly on the lens. Um, so just in case I have to cut that little piece off. <laughs> uh, I've been thinking about making a fence of pole beans not to be a fence that would actually hold goats out forever, but a fence to deter the goats when I'm taking them up and down the road from getting to the garden itself. Uh, they can munch on the pole bean fence because I know they'll be munching on whatever greens they see and then they can just blissfully follow me down without knowing what's on the other side of the fence so much. And all of that can happen until, you know, it's a very unpermanent fence while I try to get my permanent ideas for the place. Does that make sense? <laughs> I just, I don't know that the garden's going to be here forever. I'm not, go not sure if I want a fence along the road forever. And this is something that I can make out of sticks and twigs and pole beans that'll be a visual deterrent because with animals, visually deterring them from crossing a line is a good first step, right? So a good visual deterrent and it'll give them some munchy greens to distract them while I herd them from one place or another. Or if they happen to escape, hopefully most of the damage occurs to the fence and it's going to be such a long fence that I'll be dying and swimming in beans. So who cares, right? <laughs> anyway, you can tell I get really excited about this stuff and I really wanted to just update you on all of it. So I'll try to wrap up this video here. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for putting up with another strictly informational, me holding the camera, a few glamour shots video, right? Uh, I'm aware of the, the videos going this way and it's it's kind of a personal thing. I'm, uh, I'm really working hard on um, on things around here and uh, the muse of YouTube comes and goes. Sometimes the camera just captures my soul and says here is a great production and sometimes the homestead captures my soul and I forget about the camera and I tell myself later that I've got to go pick it up, right? So thank you for your patience guys. I am feeling the muse returning and I hope to to fill this YouTube channel with more of the things that you desire to see. Uh, really I'm humbled that you guys are sticking with me even though I'm not production related or production focused as some of the other YouTube channels are. And many of you have showered me with praise which I am so grateful for. Um, thanks for sticking it out. And I've had a few people throw out some good ideas for me, throw me some really good bones on what they want to see next, and that's actually been helping me too. I've got a uh, Thimbleberry video uh, in mind. It'll be up and coming. Oh, Salmonberry, but I should do both. I'll be doing Thimbleberries and Salmonberries. That was the specific request with Salmonberries. And uh, here in the future, when those are flushed out and producing fruit, you will be seeing videos on that. So throw some more out there. I'll do my best to catch them up. Uh, I've got the ones for the solar panels on under uh, wraps here and you should be seeing those soon too. Now that we've had more sun, there's more information to give you. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with this long-winded video. <laughs> and thanks as always for taking this journey with me on Simple Ground.